cool that works. You guys, it's uh, Sly, aka Greg from uh, Casually Competitive, Casual Competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! here. I uh, was at a Pro Play uh, Tour event this weekend um, in Richmond, and I got top six in the 1K event. Got, I think, 40th in the main event, which is 30, top 30%, but not, not good enough. Um, so I did, played Striker. Actually, I played uh, Exiled uh, version of uh, Striker. He let me the entire deck, plus his, uh, his awesome field token. This thing was the thing of the event. This thing was, everybody loved this card. It was the cornerstone. It was. It, it was. It brought me luck in every game, except for maybe not my one future match, which is why I will link the future match because my ego is big enough. You guys know that. Um, so let's start off with the main, main deck. We'll keep it there. Um, starting off, play three Ashes because Ash is nice. I only played six hand traps in this build. You'll see the other one very, 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 very late. Um, Ash is good because you know Ash. Ash can stop Mermaid. Ash can stop Engage. Ash can stop everything. Um, we played three Ray because you know it's Striker. You got to. Um, the chain effect to summon out Shizuku is just so awesome. Or kind of. It's lit. You know, you only play three monsters that are actually monsters for a reason. Um, then the MVP. My uh, two Mystic Minds signed by Seema himself. Um, it resolved on stream and was the awesomest thing ever. This thing is awesome because you can also... Um, they can't negate um, Kagari with uh, any hand traps. Except for, you know, an impermanence. If you had this on board. So it's awesome. So, next we got... Two, uh, two terraforming, but the ban list is going to go to one. But this deck is still completely playable, just you know, after the ban list. It's probably the best deck since all other decks suck now because of the ban list. Um, got two uh, area zeros. Um, Master of Whiffing, I really am. Um, I got engaged once off of it, I think, the entirety of the two days. Um, then three Malta Rolls. This card actually got popped more times than it resolved, um, but still it was awesome because, you know, they pop stuff. It's also a great bait. So if they have the Tornado Dragon before you activate mine, um, you try using, try first baiting with Area Zero if you can, then try baiting with this because they want to stop you from baiting the Ray. Um, and that's very, very nice. And it's even better when you only have a one of because now they're going to have to pop that pretty much. Of course, you don't have it as much, so it's a little harder to get the pop. Of course, three engages because you know Pot of Greed, draw a card. Um, awesome. It searches everything. When you can search it, you always search it because you can search anything else after that and get a guard. Why not, right? Plus, you're in mind luck. We always draw Engage of off of Engage, so. That's true. That only happened once, though, at the tournament. Before that, which was test hands, pretty much every time. Um, then we got uh, Widowanker, because Widowanker is the best card, honestly. Um, I mean, what can you say about Widowanker other than it's awesome? The, the only thing I will say about Widowanker, if you ever have two, don't steal with the first, unless you're playing Salads. If you're playing Salads, of course, salads aren't really something you see that often more. But you steal the first monster of salads, they pass turn, and you get to go uh, go again. Because literally, they got nothing they can do after you steal the first monster. Oh, here's a tip. Don't use impermanence after oh, you... Oh, yeah. So, on my future match, I didn't realize it, because this, this card just says target one face-up effect monster. Negate its effects and steal it. Uh, but apparently, if you negate the effects of it beforehand, you can't steal the monster, because it's not an effect monster anymore. Um, so I impermed a Phantasme after activating this. So I activated this... Uh, chain link one, targeting Phantasme, Phantasme chain, chain link two, and then I used an impermanence chain link three, hoping I could get damage for almost game, just summon a Hyata next turn to kill him. But uh, apparently it doesn't work that way. So, you know, I cried inside a little bit at that moment. Um, it's I, all right. I saw your face like, it's like that. This is like this is the moment, and like like but the hope in your die, like your eyes died, and it was pretty funny. They didn't die that much. There was a little bit of death though. I can't lie about that. Um, I'm playing two shark cannons. Um, I see a lot of lists playing one. And I had a guy I was talking to, actually, uh, Charlie Dupe. Um, he was at uh, Nats playing Burning Abyss Orchest. Um, he has a feature match for that. Check it out. Um, I'll link that as well. He's a cool guy. He's playing three because he likes it for the mirror match. Because um, you can use this card to mirror match, steal your opponent's Kakari, add back engages like crazy, just do it over and over and over. It's sick and awesome. Um, of course, I don't like it at three that much because it's some decks, it just you don't. it's not that good, so drawing into two isn't too amazing. And you can always search it. But I do like it enough that, like, you know, if you play against uh, Salads and you have only one engage, you want to draw into like Widow Anchor and you want to draw into both these against like a Salad deck or something like that. Um, so if you draw into whatever one you draw into, you can search the other one, which is awesome. Which won't be relevant anymore. Yeah, but well, it's still relevant for other decks, honestly, I would say, because there's going to be targets that you can always pop um, and destroy and you know, blow up and get removed from the game. Like if you're playing Burning Abyss, I did activate this against Burning Abyss player, removing his, uh, his Seer from Graveyard just for extra spice, just to get three spells in Grave. It was fun. But yeah, remember, always steal your pawns, Kagari, in here. Um, then we got 100 rounds. Uh, it summoned out my token over 9,000 once. Um, only once. Otherwise, it, it literally didn't come up ever. Once is enough. Yeah, actually, this is my favorite. One of my favorite targets to send off of a uh, Hayate 
after you already have enough resources because it literally you don't need it in deck you don't need to set it ever so like okay why not just not draw it then right um but you get the spells and grave for a shizuku and Kyori. um then one hercules base this card is just awesome unless you open it i see a lot of people open it and they act, try to activate it popping one of the other cards just sure it's card i don't necessarily like that i like just holding it even setting it because your opponent might mst or twin twister it and then you get its effect to resolve plus if you're able to activate a kakari before that and they pop this card when it's set you get the kakari back um, but if you just, if you um, pop it before you do any combos using your own combo cards, you don't really get anything off of it. And you, you have, then you have to waste your Kakari to get this back, to then get the Kakari back, which doesn't make sense, does it? Um, so yeah, one of works, though, even with one Monty Roll, um, my theory for the future is you can activate the, um, the Area Zero, or not the Area Zero, uh, get both the um, Kakari Engrave and get the Monty Roll Engrave, the single one of us, and get both of them back. Only use it. Uh, preemptively, I think, if you've got, got game, pretty much. Um, two of these guys. I honestly like this card more, I think, just because I don't like popping monsters, because I like keeping them as many monsters as possible, because you have Mystic Mono Field. You, like, actually, you'll see in my future match, I used a, I used this card, and I didn't pop a monster. It's not because I'm stupid, it's because he had two monsters on board, I have one monster, then Mystic Mind blows up at the end of the turn. So I didn't want to let Mystic Mind blow up at the end of the turn. Um, plus, I think I had to resolve that one afterwards, which is why I had to do it. Um, which is also why I activated this, targeting the um, Jack Jaguar in the future match, because he could banish Balings and it wouldn't get destroyed, so we'd have more materials harder to get away with Mystic Mine, um, which is beautiful. But I wanted it engraved because I wanted to set the Engage back, which is what I did. Um, both card, great cards, both one ofs because you can search them and they can't be chained, therefore, you know, useless during your opponent's turn. Um, then we got one equal booster. Um, it's good. If you ever have it with uh, Kagari and Ant, you know, Kagari will resolve no matter what, pretty much. Unless if they have an impermanent set or a second mailer, I guess. But it's nice. Um, next, we got three Mystical Space Typhoon, signed by Nimnim. Um, these are nice because they can pop pretty much anything. If they can pop your opponent's fog blades that they have set, it can pop, you know, rages, uh, roars, um, and also you can pop your field spell, which is nice because if you ever need to get a copy of Ray, you got it. Um, next, what do we got? Two Foolish Barrel of Goods. I heard some uh, conflicting things, things with this card, um, but I like it at two because you can activate it and you get two spells in Grave for the uh, the Engage, which is nice. So if you go first with this card, it's a nice card. Um, you basically, you can do two things with this. You can either send uh, Metal Fist Fusion, which is actually right here. Um, you can send Fusion and use Fusion, or you can send Engage, make a Kagari, add back Engage, and then activate it, Engage, which if you have a multi-roll set, it's really nice because then you can act activate add the multi-roll back to hand. Um, or sorry, add the, add, add the uh, engage back and set it, and you can get a Suzuku search for another engage, therefore you get two more engages. Of course, you want to make sure you have enough back row to sustain yourself, and you want to make sure you can play through a veil or something like that, if that happens. Then your Suzuku, Suzuku can't necessarily search it sometimes, but if you have the multi-roll, pretty much everything's okay. But yeah, multi -roll. of course, fusion, you know, draw a card, which is always nice. Of course, I always forget to do that. Never draw, right? Never draw. Upstart, because upstart's awesome. Um, free card and grave. Double or nothing for the Toby double combo, which is nice. And then your fourth copy of uh, a fray. And finally, what do you mean your seventh potential? Maybe yeah, potentially seventh. It's the fifth right now. Three rays, two uh, area zeros, and then one of that. So that's five. Then three impermanence because permanence is awesome. Um, I can't lie. Maybe having a second, uh, two bailers in here could be nice. Um, but you don't need it. Need it. I did well enough without having it. Um, going on to the extra deck. Played Borla. Never played it. Played Boral Sword, played it once. Uh, Phoenix, never played it. Um, Kagari, played it pretty much every game. Um, sometimes multiple ball. Half the games, multiple times a game. Two Kindness. Um, you can play it for time, which I did do once. I won one game at time, just back to getting one spell card and winning. Um, the second one is basically because if you ever have to use Ray and a. Um, if you've engaged and you're trying to just get spells in Grave or something like that, you can use your. Uh, your Air Zero to pop your uh, Ray chain ray special this guy out because it's kind of just you only really need one most of the time and you can just burn the resource pretty much um then we got three of hayate because attacking directly is nice especially with mine because then you can just get 70 uh, what is it 45 on there 15 15 15 you have 45 or if you hold it you can attack twice with it if you can hold the game state and you can just either win with time or win the game with this card um which is nice it just comes really well with mine yeah it does plus it sends any cards so like if you can summon out ray you want to get an access to engage, you can summon this guy out, attack, send engage, link off into Kagari, um, add engage back. Of course, you're walking into a Baylor right there or an impermanence, so 
you don't want to risk it too much, but it could work. Like if you're planning to go, uh, if you don't have, let's say you don't have multi-roll, you have that and you attack, you want to send the engage. Uh, it's a little risky. Um, you could do kind of if you wanted to risk it and go for it and just try, try to add back it. If it gets hand trapped, you go to the Shizuku, which is of course next card three of, and you can search out um, multi-roll to try to get it back next turn. Um, not as optimal, but if it resolves, it's awesome. Um, also, Shizuku is awesome if you uh, Shizuku and Kaina both are awesome. If you have your Ray attacked or killed, yeah, I to, no, I take the wrong one out. Thank you for that, um, Kaina. There we are. Um, these guys, if you have your like whatever your Shizuku that you had done in killed, summon off the Ray back out, then you can pop it out when they attack it. For either the, the Shizuku, if you have a bunch of spells in grave, that can just end a lot of attacks, which is nice. I did a lot. And if you don't have enough spells in grave, you're like, let's see, you only have like three or something like that. Your opponent's like 20 attack monsters. So I'm kind of stop the high stack monster, and if nothing else can attack over this, you also end the turn for attacks. Which, basically, when they break mine, you can just do that and you survive, um, which is really nice. Um, finally, we got the Utopia double combo. Simple, it's no decay. This deck is just trash without this, in my opinion, because you lose a lot of more games. But if you have mine, I guess it's not as trash. Got one Dingarizu because, you know, steel, uh, what's you call it? Galatea. Yeah, Galatea. Or technically it's still, uh, is it Ningari? No, not Ningarisu. Longarisu, I think. Whatever that card is. Level Flink 3. Nobody plays it though very often. Um, but this is nice because you pop stuff. But I didn't use it. I don't, it might not be necessary at all, but it's like, you, you have, have 15 spot. It. Why yeah. not? Um, of course, token. It's over 9,000. And anime girl token, because why not? Um, really, anime. Check out the anime. Uh, Rascal's not dreaming about a girl senpai. It's awesome. Now, finally, Side deck. We have three Parker Tops. I think I set it in like once, just because I didn't feel like I needed it, needed it for most matchups. Because like when a lot of times I lost, like if I lost the first game, um, I'd be going first. So if, well, in the second event, the 1K, um, where I got the top, every game I lost the first game, I lost the second game too, and I just lost the round, which was only twice. Um, last round of the tournament and against Thunder Dragons, which you know just sucks. I didn't draw into it. So going first you just don't need this card in that case so it never came up but it's good if it did come up uh, I have three raws sphere modes um, I opened it twice siding in salads and um, yeah both times they couldn't resolve combo because <laughs> they didn't have combo so it came up being useless but if it, if they had combo it would have resolved so beautifully now you just hope the card you draw that against um, thunder you know, oh yeah pre ban well, list but didn't get it against thunder either which sucked but we got drolls. Um, I drolled Thunder Dragon player for game two. It was awesome. But then he normal Denko Seka and I lost. So that was very disappointing. I actually had the second one in hand. So I had two of those in an ash. He bounced the ash back with, uh, I believe it's the Levionaire, I believe it was called. Uh, the, the guy banished three in grave. Um, oh, no, the, with um... Diabols. It was a Diabolus. Diabolus um, makes you put it on the top or the bottom. Yeah, and it was Diabolus. The, the uh, Chaos Dragon. Yeah, Chaos Dragon level here. Um, I opened, had Lancia. Uh, used it against Infernoids, which I drew that round. Um, and then I also played it against, that was on the first day. And I also played it against um, Thunders, where they had the entire hand we want the draw in hand, so that really sucked. Um, that was in the first tournament, which is why I didn't do very well there. I drew into every hand trap I didn't want and not the other ones for their hands, which was fun. Always happens, right? And then finally, triple evenly. Um, evenly was beautiful because I played against a salad player, in which my hand was two evenlies and a bunch of other cards. He went for full combo, had a roar set. I went into battle phase, activate evenly. He activated roar. I was like, okay, cool. And battle phase, activate evenly. And he was like, he just, fuck. It was pretty much his response, um, which is beautiful. But yeah, I like this card. Uh, I didn't get to play him against uh, any mirrors in the actual event. I played a guy mirrors outside just for fun. Evenly is beautiful against the mirror because you just remove everything. Um, but didn't come up in the event um, other than the Salad Grant. Salad Grant player. This deck is awesome because it's free wins against Salads because you just you just win with Widow Anchor. Widow Anchor Shark Cannon is just ridiculous because literally... If they open Spinny and Gazelle, which is the only way they can pull combo through things, pretty much, unless they have Will, let's say. But if they have Will, it still wins. Um, you, they normal summon the, uh, the Spinny, let's say. They send it for Bailings, summon the Gazelle. You chain, negate the Gazelle. They go, okay. And they go, activate Spinny, and you just banish the Spinny, and then they're like, well, shoot. 
and then they proceed to lose, which is awesome. But yeah, this deck is awesome. Um, I do think with the, the ban list, you know, multiple rollers got hit. Um, where is it? Multi-roll. Clearly not in deck. <laughs> multi-roll got hit to one. And then we also had Terraforming get hit to one. Um, what I would do because of that, and because of the, especially because Mystic Mind being so good, I'd play a third Mystic Mind and try playing out another copy of uh, Area Zero. And then these two cards can find it. Like, they can be Veilers, you can play a Metaverse or something else. Um, whatever you kind of want. Depends, but you know. You could also try playing a more of a Trap Variant where you play the um, Summon Limits. But I don't like that too much because I like being able to blitz through a bunch of these guys in one turn. Because if you can go the Kagari Hate and Shizuku in turn is really nice because then you get a lot of advantage off that. Plus Hercules basically I'll shuffle them all back. So you'll want, we'll probably only do it like once. But if you do that, it gets a lot of advantage really quick. Um, so yeah, that's it guys. Um, have a nice day. See ya.